those who decide to paddle the Mississippi River know the level of commitment that is required to undertake such a journey. Endless planning and wonder of what will be. There will be many decisions made along the way, but only one of them can completely change the dynamic of the experience of your final days on river. The gateway of this decision is known as the Old River Lock, and it offers another path to the Gulf. A path that bypasses the heavy shipping industry of the last stretches of the Mississippi and brings you through the majestic Atchafalaya River Basin. We made the journey back to Louisiana to experience this other way to the Gulf. Welcome to the Atchafalaya River. All right, it's not every day you start the adventure of a lifetime. Our journey began with a 20 hour drive from Minnesota. We arrive here at the Old River Lock in Louisiana, which is undergoing some scheduled maintenance and is not currently operational. We had looked forward to going through the lock, but we are simply the victim of bad timing. We set up camp just below the lock. Looking to get an early start, we stay just off the boat launch. Gators aren't attracted to sound, right? What's that? So gators aren't attracted to sound, right? Our ride leaves us, and once again, we are paddlers traveling the river. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Atchafalaya River. We are out here, finally. This trip was two years in the making, so it's pretty cool to actually be sitting on the water and on our way. Um, the reason I am down here doing this river is 2019, when I did the entire Mississippi, I went through Baton Rouge and New Orleans. There is a way you can cut off the main river and go down what's called the Atchafalaya River. And the Atchafalaya River cuts about 100 miles off your journey or so, a couple days, um, and you can take the Atchafalaya all the way to the Gulf. And what you do when you do that is you bypass the heavy industrialized shipping areas of the lower Mississippi River. Um, the trade-off to that is gators, spiders, snakes. This is, um, what is it, North America's, I, I believe, largest river-fed swamp. And so it's essentially a giant nature preserve. And uh, it's a massive area with very dynamic life. So it should be pretty cool to experience the Atchafalaya River. So many people take this path and uh, not a lot of videos get made of this, this, um, this route. So it'll be kind of fun to do it. So our plan is to leave the old river lock. Um, unfortunately it was closed, so we weren't able to go through it, 
But uh, we're going to leave the old river lock, head down to the Atchafalaya. We're going to take the Atchafalaya down to Yellow Bayou. Bayou, Yellow Bayou, we're going to take to Wax Lake Cutoff. Wax Lake, man, Wax Lake Cutoff will then take us to Hog Bayou. And we will take Hog Bayou all the way to the Gulf, paddle two miles across the Gulf Coast to Burns Point. So that isn't the intended goal and uh, a path that is becoming more and more popular as time goes on. So it'd be cool to see this stretch of river. Um, it's low water, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm usually a floodwater guy, so it's uh, in the big river, it's low water. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But uh, nonetheless, here we go. Let's experience the Atchafalaya River. We are just coming to the end of the old river lock channel that brings you down to the Atchafalaya. So it looks like on our right here we have the Red River and then on the left starts the Atchafalaya River. So here's a good little shot of that. It's just a nice big sandy point there. I almost wonder if you couldn't camp there even if the water was just a little higher. But uh, yeah, so pretty neat little spot. And uh, now we'll have some current. Hooray! We like current. So it should be pretty cool. It's been a good paddle so far. Um, we definitely have low water out here. I think I mentioned that earlier. We can see a lot of the shoreline that normally is not exposed. But uh, yep, now we're on the Atchafalaya proper. So um, should be a, a good little boost in speed and uh, we'll get a little bit of help from current, which would be great. go and proof that there's current.
Well, a little bit of an update on the river. So we've been paddling since about 7.30. It's uh, almost noon now and uh, it's been a really good paddle. We got uh, pretty calm weather and the sun is hot, but not too bad. And then uh, it's our first gator, but of course I yelled to Ann who was with me and uh, she looked over and he heard me and bolted into the water. So I didn't even get footage of the first gator out here, unfortunately been good um hearing the sounds of the south you can hear the bugs off in the tree lines and uh, we're just enjoying the paddle so pretty calm haven't seen a soul since we left uh pretty much the confluence of the red and the chafalaya rivers uh, that was about the last time we saw somebody so it's been real quiet out here but uh tons of birds um just looking forward to getting my first gator on film for y'all so but uh yeah it's been nice it's uh, uh you know Thinking about the size of the river, I kind of, an area I'm familiar with is Lock 2 in Hastings, Minnesota for the Mississippi. This is about how wide I think the river is there. So that gives you an idea of the actual size of the Atchafalaya. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was, um, but still pretty cool. It's nice to be back on a big river and uh, nonetheless a, a river we got all to ourselves. So, but that's been a good paddle. What you got there, Ann? Got a tuna and cucumber sandwich on an everything bagel. That's pretty crazy. I just said that was probably the freshest meal I've ever seen on the river. So we'll take this opportunity while we're on a little lunch here just to say hi to Ann. Ann, Ann paddled the river in Mississippi River in 2020. She reached out to me because of the videos, obviously, and uh, yes, asked for some help uh, getting ready for the journey. And she also went the Baton Rouge to New Orleans route and after she was done had the great idea of hey what would it be like to go down paddle the Atchafalaya River and see what the other way to the Gulf looks like so in two years in the making we planned this journey and now here we are we are actually out here and uh, experiencing it together so it's kind of neat to see what the other way looks like it's great it's been really nice so far I mean we got down here in two days so I feel like it was a lot of travel a lot of miles to get down here but uh, luckily and then Dan is her husband he was our kind enough to be our chauffeur on this journey so um, it was kind of nice he brought us right to the uh, old river lock and then he took off for some uh, southern food so he's off mm -hmm. uh, living it up at the at the uh, restaurants and the hotels and we're gonna meet him at Burns Point after the end of this journey, yes. so. But uh, yeah, no, this was a great little spot to stop. I mean, we got a nice sandbar here and- This would be great camping. Great camping if the river is low enough. Mm -hmm. And this will be my reminder to actually look and see what the river gauge is at this moment. But uh, yeah, you could totally get by camping on this point right here and it's a nice little spot. So uh, lots of Asian carp, I think in this area or something big, I don't know what they are, but uh, they, uh, they do kind of pop out of the water and, and scare you a bit, so be ready for that. Other than that, yeah, we uh, living it up here on the Atchafalaya. It's pretty cool. Oh man, don't be these people. Dumping trash right over the edge. Pretty unfortunate. That's just too bad, on such a nice beach too. All right, we are closing down our first day on the Atchafalaya River. Uh, we have made it 34 miles? I think it was 34. Roughly, 
something yeah. like that. Four or five miles in the channel, and then the countdown from zero to 30, 31. Yeah. So not bad. Um, not a lot of current out there. I mean, it does help, and you can <laughs> tell it's out there, but it's not a lot. So I think 30 miles for a first day isn't too bad, especially for a couple of people who didn't just paddle the majority of the Mississippi and get prepared for such right. miles. Um, our plan A campsite didn't work out for tonight, so we just went to plan B, which is just this nice sandy point you see here. I'm set up there by the water, and, and Anne is just a little higher up. Um, might be a good decision. I'm starting to see these uh, wet lines on the <laughs> beach here and wondering if maybe I, uh, I'm just a little too I think close. You're good. But uh, what do you think so far? Oh, it's just so nice to finally be down here after all the planning and it's so darn pretty. But yeah, a little bit of current would be nice, but it, I, there's current, so yeah. Good deal. We did see our first gator, but it took off in the water the second I called him out. So he realized he was busted and he made a run for it. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll keep eyes out for him. But sounds like tomorrow we're gonna run to Cot Springs. There's an RV campground just south of there to get some water because we uh, would be a little more comfortable with a little bit more water. So yeah. um, we'll take care of that. And then we're gonna hit the I-10 bridge as our final destination. But uh, for tonight, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. So we're going to sit here, enjoy the river and all the splashing going on, and uh, hopefully have a nice, quiet, uh, uneventful evening. That's going to do it for episode one. We are finally on the water and making progress on discovering the other way to the Gulf. And so far, it has been a very enjoyable paddle. Check back for episode 2, where we continue down the Atchafalaya. Take care, and we will see you on the next one.